How are we going everybody? This is day two of revitalizing our, well in this case here, our potato bed and we're bringing it back to life. So we've done the composting we showed you yesterday and the uh, planting mix on top with obviously cocoa pith underneath there. And I did mention to you that we've inoculated our straw yesterday but we didn't apply it and this is what Hugo's doing at the moment, spreading the straw out. And that's because we've just finished installing this irrigation. Now, I like using both drip and overhead sprays at the same time. And I'll tell you why it's important to have both. You need to water underneath the mulch. You need to get the moisture down in there below, especially in areas like where we are, it's really hot. So it, drip irrigation is vital to get the water right underneath there and soaking into the soil to keep the microbes alive. But it's also vital to have overhead sprays, which I do by hand here. I haven't installed any impact sprinklers. And because if you don't spray over the top, this is the mulch we laid down yesterday. So Hugo's just put this stuff here. It's really wet. It's absorbed all the, ba um, the, the biostimulants, which is the Eco Butch and Liquid Gold. But this is the mulch I laid yesterday. And have a look at it. It's already dry. So that will dry out because of the sun. Now today is about 21 degrees and it will dry out if you don't water it. And in this case here, we need to water every day over the top because that's how harsh our weather is in Lethbridge. But underneath the drip system, well, let's check out and see how well it's working. This is a two litre per hour drip line that I've installed. And what it has is little holes inside with the filtering system, a regulator inside. So it emits the water, as you can see here, it's dripping down. And in this case here, because we've got a high level of water pressure, and it's only a small run that we're doing. It's actually pushing out a lot more water than it would normally if it was a longer run. But that's not a bad thing. It's actually quite good. So it's not going too fast and it's quick enough and slow enough, I should say, to soak into the soil and absorb through the ground there. Now, the holes are at every 30 centimeters approximately. If I lift it up, there should be another one there. And you'll see it. the same thing goes all the way along. Installing this is quite easy and we'll show you that in a second, but let's have a look and see how well it's absorbing in this area here. Now think about the moisture and consider your soil as a dry sponge, a dry old crinkly cracky sponge. And it takes a few goes to hydrate it. Once it starts to get its moisture, you will see the water transverse across and open up into a larger puddle. And it's quite evident in this section. Have a look at that. You can see the drip's only there, but the moisture is actually traveling across. And the longer you leave it, the more it will hydrate. And if you do a repetitive application, it will hydrate a large area and also a deep area. And that's what you want. And you can see it's pulling up beautifully underneath. Still dry. We've only had it on for about four minutes, five minutes. So you can see it's going to get through there. We're going to come back and monitor this every day or every week let's say and see how well we get the moisture down deep below the moisture is vital for the life of the soil without moisture there is no life so how easy is it to install it's as easy as playing with legos measure out your lengths and space them out around 40 centimeters so each row of irrigation as you can see over there we've done it by eye but it's approximately 40 to 50 centimeters in spacing so that is important, otherwise further apart you won't get the water to cross between one line and the other. So 40 to 50 centimetres apart, remember there are holes at every 30 centimetres approximately, and you also get yourself little joiners. So you've got elbows, you've got T-sections, you've got joiners which are a straight line as well, just like this, and you have the hose clamps as well on top, which is important because on hot days, and if you've got parts of your hose exposed, it can become quite soft. And with the water pressure inside there, it can pop the hose off the actual fitting itself. So when it comes to joining them, you don't need to do anything hot. Look at that, how soft that is. It just slides on like that. That's because it's warm and it can come off straight away. So you can appreciate with the high water pressure, that'll pop it off straight away. So once you get that on there, you get your hose clamp and you can do it either with finger pressure or for those who need a bit more security, get yourself a pair of pliers and squeeze it tight. Now, if I try to take that off, that will not come off because there's a little lip there preventing the hose from sliding off because the clip's in place. So that's the benefit of the clip. And when you lay it down on the ground, make sure your clip's facing up or just to the side like that. Don't want to bury the clip underneath there. 
That's just my preference because you'll get soil inside the little grooves and if it pops out, you're gonna to have to pull it apart and wash it all. So joining it is quite simple, as you saw. Measure to length and ideally measure each piece, if you can, at the beginning and get them all the same length, like that, and then start creating the pattern that you like. Joiners, elbows, tees and cross sections are all available and relatively cheap too, folks. So two litres per hour per 30 centimetres. So if we run this for an hour per hole and we've got about a five metre run, we've got three, six, nine, we've got 15 holes at two litres each. That's 30 litres per hose. So that means we've got 150 litres per hour being emitted in this garden bed. And another thing that you need to pay attention to is pegging it down. Because when you first get the roll, it will coil up. So we've got pegs going down at all the joints, just like that, and a few through the center to keep it flush to the soil surface. Very important. Otherwise, when you first unroll it, you'll always struggle. It'll bounce around like a coil spring. And make sure you bury it under your mulch. It's vital to keep the pipe nice and cool, otherwise it will heat up when it's not running and when you turn the tap on, you don't want hot water being emitted straight into the soil, especially with those fine little feeder roots. You may cause a bit of burning to, uh, to happen. So mulch on top. And for those who don't want to use mulch and prefer to bury it in the soil, that's fine as well, as long as you've got the water pressure going through it and activating so that it can push its way through the actual walls of that soil. And a good practice is every three months or so, to come out to the far end of the pipe, disconnect the fittings and turn the water on to flush out any sediments that may come through the pipeline in your tap. But you can install a filter to prevent any sediments getting through and blocking the pipeline. So flush it out every three months, install a filter, cover it over with mulch and have some fun installing your irrigation. That's what we're going to do. No more watering by hand. Actually, I shouldn't say that because I still need, to, still need to hose over the top. Maybe some impact sprinklers will go in next. And just before we go, folks, KC Garden Works is going to be at the Christian, sorry. And just before we go, folks, KC Garden Works is going to be at the Heritage Christian College today from 11 to 5. They're holding a big festival there. He's got a stall there with all our product range, including the planting mix, compost and cocoa and liquid fertiliser. So pop down there at 333 Centre Road in Narry Warren. You'll be able to get everything you need of our range there. But if you can't get there, well, go to our website, vasilisgarden.com. Our 20% off special on our planting mix triple pack ends at midnight. So take advantage of that, vasilisgarden.com from Eva Silly, Maresi.